Tablighi Jamaat, A House Divided, Vying Narratives, Part 2 of 4. If we take a look back to Professor Harvey Kushner's factors that all terrorism hinges upon, he mentioned three. Number one, the violence, which is the method. Number two, the target, civilians stroke government. Number three, the purpose. And for the TJ, for the TJ, it would be to not force social change, but they would say invite social change. So we can't exactly apply Professor Kushner's factors to the TJ. We'd have to change it a little bit. But we have to go back to Dr. Peary now to see the section that he wrote about allegations made against the TJ, the allegations of terrorism. And this is where there are vying narratives. There are those that will say point blank and across the board, the TJ is a terroristic violence promoting group. And there are those also mentioned in Dr. Peary's thesis that deny and absolve the TJ from any violence. Both of these narratives are false. And to introduce a third concept, there are those that would conflate TJs with Salafis um, and say that this is the cause of um, terrorism in the modern world. So those that are for um, the idea that TJs are terrorists and terroristic are people like Irfan al-Alawi, Ed Hussein and Taj Hage, as well as local people from the London area where the TJs proposed to build their mosque. So he used that um, failed attempt to build a mosque as a case study in exploring the allegations of terrorism made against the TJ. Now, TJ leaders, they strongly strongly deny uh, association with terrorists and they were up against research from high profile terrorism cases and this is mentioned by Sachs in 2003 uh, that stated things like the following law enforcement officials say the group has been caught up in such cases because of its global reach and reputation for rejecting such worldly activities as politics. Precisely the qualities that are exploited by terror groups like Al-Qaeda. And it says, quote, We have a significant presence of Tablighi Jamaat in the United States, and we have found that Al-Qaeda used them for recruiting now and in the past, said Michael J. Heimbach, and he is the deputy chief of the FBI's International Terrorism Section. This led um, the European Union Commission uh, to highlight the further problematic link. It stated, security experts assess them as potentially dangerous because of, their, of the training they organize in Pakistan. Their training can be for some Muslims the start of an Islamist or even terrorist career. This assessment is also shared by the interviewed former Tablighi Jamaat member who argues that the organization can serve as a catalyst function for radicalization. Others argue that although the Tablighi Jamaat does not formally propagate violence, they sometimes articulate some understanding or acceptance of violence that occurs, which might have a catalytic influence on some individuals. So then he, then he mentions, Dr. Peary mentions, in an unprecedented move, Yusuf Saleri, a senior leader at the movement's HQ in Nizamuddin, so this is in India. So this was unprecedented, meaning they never addressed these things. They'd never actually addressed these things in the past, these accusations. So they had, they were forced, their hand was forced to start addressing them. I should make it very clear to you, the media and everybody who is interested in knowing our ish, stand on the issue of Al-Qaeda, that we need that we neither indulge nor support any kind of violence on the name of Islam or anything at all. 
In fact, we condemn their doings on the name of Islam. Violence which is done by people is un-Islamic and the Jamaat condemns it in the strongest terms. There was some problems with the English there, but that's not surprising. So they, there were accusations made that they are terrorists and they do promote violence and terrorism. And then in an unprecedented step, they had to deny it, which is something that is in opposition to Salafi scholarship, at least, because um, modern day Salafi scholars, and there are three classical ones, um, Ibn Baz, Albani, Uthaymin, they have for, until their deaths at least, decades spoken against uh, political violence. The TJ are leaving it to 2010, 2011 to actually start talking about this sort of stuff. So it's um, a bit of um, uh, a head in the sand sort of uh, approach to terrorism. Now, of course, there will be those Muslims who defend the TJ and they'll say that there is no link whatsoever between the TJ and terroristic violence. And examples of these people are... Iqbal Sakrani stated that there is not an iota of evidence that TJ supports Al-Qaeda or terrorism. Anas Takriti, founder of the Cordoba Foundation, who said that it is absolutely ridiculous. Everyone knows that the TJ is peaceful, non-violent and keeping aloof from politics. And likewise, academics like Yoginda Sikhand was quoted in the Daily Telegraph as saying, that fringe elements do not reflect the peaceful spirit of the whole group and the very loose organisation, adding that it was simply wrong to describe TJs as a terrorist recruiting organisation. Further to this, Gilead Ray and Burt commented that Faisal Iqbal, a one-time spokesman for TJ, has commented that if anything, the TJ may be viewed as a force for de-radicalisation. So here are the two opposing narratives one stating that the tj is terroristic and the other saying no it's actually a force for de-radicalization so in the next part i will discuss using dr kushner's three pronged factors that all terrorist organizations have and see if the tj actually have these factors within them as well as looking at the messy relationship and what causes people to conflate Salafism and TJ uh, ideology. So stay tuned for that part.